Hello, senators and legates. Welcome to Total War Tactics. Today, we are going to take a closer look at a tactic which is shown to be very effective in real life. But now, we need to figure out if it's actually good enough for Total War itself. As you can see, we're going to be doing this in Rome 2 with the Divided Imperial mod enabled. And just so you know it, we are going to be covering a tiny bit of historical context, the theoretical formation and how to execute it, the army composition, how to use it in game, and how to defeat it. If there are any certain parts of the video you want to see, there are timestamps in the description for you to use. But with that said, let's introduce the tactic. It is known as the Bull Horns of the Buffalo, or just Horns of the Buffalo, it doesn't really matter. To give you a bit of context about the formation, it was used by Shaka Zulu in the 1870s, when he fought and won several battles against the British Empire. Can you believe that? A man using spears, and still won against enemies with firearms. It's incredible to be honest. It is a time period I would recommend for you to check out in the future, but I won't go into any more details than that. But moving on from the historical context and over to the composition. Shaka Zulu positioned his men like this. In the center of his formation, he will have the chest. The main objective from these guys were to pin down the enemy and try to keep them occupied. At each side, he had the horns. Their sole purpose were to flank around the enemy and strike them from the side and rear. Sounds easy, but it really isn't. This is basically gonna be the killer move. And then all the way at the back we have the loins. They weren't really supposed to fight unless it was absolutely necessary. In some cases they would actually be positioned with their backs to the fighting so they wouldn't just rush into combat without any orders. If I had to describe this tactic with my own European brain, it is almost like an aggressive battle of Canet tactic or the more well-known Hammer and Anvil tactic. Like, it's, it's the same principle, but one is just a bit more proactive than the other. But let's move on from the theoretical work and start to take a close look at the practical part of it. You can pretty much pick any factions you'd like, but I would recommend the Medewi as their unit roster is closest to the historical army that you can get in this game here. But if you don't have that DLC, you can always choose one of the Germanic factions as they have a lot of stealth units. In this case here, I'm gonna be showing this off with the Mederi against a friend of mine called Yoshio. And hopefully, we can beat his ass. We're gonna be playing on Ultra Funds, meaning we'll have 16,000 gold spent. It's quite a lot, but you might realize it actually is not, if you want to have a good army. And we're gonna be spending it like this. We're gonna have one horseback general, and I've chosen this as it is the easiest way to keep him alive. This will be our only cavalry unit. For the chest we need something tough and strong, which won't break instantly. Therefore we are gonna have the following. 5 pikemen, a cost of 745 each. They will have the easiest time to pin down the enemy. Behind them we're gonna have 3 cheap archers for range support for the small price of 7.5. Each horn are gonna be very identical, so remember to double this up for the other side as well. They need to be both powerful and fast, meaning we need the following. Two light spearmen at the front at the cost of 660 gold each. One unit of javelin throwers for a bit of range right behind them, and then all the way at the back we have the medium sword unit for a bit of muscle at the huge cost of 1045 gold. For the loins, we could basically choose anything really we could afford, but I chose three light swordsmen, 
so they quickly can move around the battlefield if needed. They cost 675 gold each. This will bring us down to 60 gold remaining. That is money well spent in my opinion. But let's see if it actually performs. We have formed up our army as we are supposed to. And as we are the attacker, we'll move first. As we can see, Yoshuk has formed up his formation with a tight block in the center and a bit of cavalry to threaten our right horn. But if you counted the amount of troops he had visible and we quickly realized that he must have hidden a few troops somewhere. He must be trying to ambush us somewhere and there was really only one place they could hide. A small forest near his right flank. Fast forward a bit and the right horn is in a standoff with his cavalry while the first skirmish began. The left horn kept moving forward. And as the cavalry moved further behind our army, we need to change a few things. I don't want them to hit the chest in the rear, and the loins are only sword infantry, so they are not good against cavalry. So I decided to swap the two spear units from the right with two sword units from the loins. This will keep our back safe. Our left horn had now, unchallenged, moved up to the enemy flank. At the same time, Yoshuk sprung his trap. We quickly adapted to the situation by spreading out the horn to a curved line. His cavalry had now moved over to the left horn, most likely trying to find an easy target. We would therefore use our spears from the loins to block the path. Although we didn't get there in time, we still managed to catch them while engaged. At the same time, on the other flank, our right horn have now successfully outflanked the enemy, making an easy time of the battle. The enemy's left flank eventually gave up, giving us the advantage to take out his remaining troops. A stunning victory. With the victory over Yoshuk, I think it's time to see how you actually can defeat this formation here. As far as I know, I can only think of three main ways to defeat it. Number one, take advantage of the gaps between the horns and the chest, and focus down one of the horns. We never really tried this, but in theory it should work, because the horns are basically the one thing that actually makes this tactic work, so if we take them out of the game, it should be easy pickings from then on out. Step 2. Simply outflank the horns. It might be easier said than done, but if you've got enough cavalry, it should be doable. We saw in this battle here that he almost actually pulled it off, because he actually moved his cavalry over to the other side, one horn was actually free to move out as they wished. The final way to defeat it is just to pin down the units so they won't be able to flank you. Many of these units are easy to get rid of and in a one-on-one -on -one, it should be an easy picking for any unit. In our third battle where he was playing as Ptolemaic Egypt, we gave him a lot more money just to see if more elite units could defeat this tactic here. And they did, they just slaughtered every unit one on one. So that is certainly a way to go about this. There might be better ways to defeat the horns of the buffalo, but remember, the best tactic is usually the simplest, but the simplest is most likely also the hardest to pull off. <laughs>